This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store. Simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now live from Studio B, here's Jerem Jordan. And from Las Vegas, Spencer Linton. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store. Official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Thursday, March 3rd. Thanks for being here. I'm Jerem Jordan, teamed up with the man who's looking to bump Wayne Newton out of title of Mr. Las Vegas, Spencer Linton. Look, Jerem, when... Somebody's going to replace Wayne Newton. He's not getting any younger. It's got to happen sometime. i got to come with my best foot forward, which is why I've opted to go with the tie today and really send a message that I mean business when I'm in Las Vegas. Let's go, man. All business. A tie. Something that won't happen in our double-down picks this year. I can guarantee that. Here's the show lineup. <laughs> what did the West Coast Conference Awards tell us about the season for the men and women's hoops teams? Plus, West Coast Conference Player of the Year, Shaylee Gonzalez, will be in studio. I'll chat with her. Spencer will chat with the commish of the West Coast Conference as well, Gloria Navarez. And did Kairos Tonga get Mike wazowski from Sports Illustrated? It's all coming up in the show. But first, here are today's headlines. BYU women's basketball takes in just a bevy of annual West Coast Conference awards. Not a surprise. The Cougars absolutely dominated this year, and it showed in the postseason honors, beginning with Shaley Gonzalez, who goes back-to-back WCC Player of the Year, Jeff Judkins, Coach of the Year, Gonzalez, Paisley Harding, Lauren Gustin, all members on the All-WCC First Team, Tegan Graham, an honorable mention. Frankly, I think she should have been the second teamer, but you know what? It's enough, Jerem. They were really good, and it showed in the awards. Uh, Greatest showman taught us never enough, never enough, right? Okay, uh, on the men's side, Alex Barcelo is the lone Cougar on the West Coast Conference first team. No Cougs on the second team. Husseini Traore uh, was on the freshman team. So probably what we expected there and what you guys discussed for the most part yesterday. Yeah, some history on the wrong side for the BYU men. Much more on that coming up in just a moment. Hey, Tyler Algier begins his NFL Combine sequence or runs today not an actual run but the combat activities begin for mr algier he is ranked 47th overall and running back three a potential second round draft pick i I think it's still going to be probably fourth round but hey who knows maybe tyler's numbers and his combine effort can push him up that'd be amazing if he was rb3 like incredible i'm hoping he's rb5 so yeah let's go Okay, baseball, uh, winner five in a row, has its home opening series today with Milwaukee, not the Brewers. They're just watching from home in uh, doubleheader fashion, beginning at 3 Eastern on the BYU TV app. BYU softball takes on San Diego State today as they continue just a glorious run through warm weather in San Diego today at the San Diego Classic. One and three in Cathedral City, California, so not a great performance after the Cougars won nine games in a row. Good luck to the ladies today as they begin this morning. Good luck indeed. Women's soccer announces a 10-match spring schedule, which begins Saturday against Utah State and Utah in the indoor practice facility. No ACLs, please. It feels like every year someone goes down. Everybody be healthy. Both teams. Seriously. Men's and women's swim and dive. Day three of the Texas Last Chance meet today. This comes after the men's MPS have first place finish for the second year in a row and the women taking third place overall. And Cougars in the pros. Yoli Childs had 16 points, 13 rebounds, and five blocks in a Salt Lake City Stars overtime win versus Iowa. He continues to crush it. He's just incredible. And Michaela Coulihan started for the Orlando Pride in a scoreless draw against Kansas City. Congrats to Michaela, who got the start here. No smile for this particular photo. Maybe a little nerves. Maybe the game face was on. Not exactly sure, but the uh, regular season starts in about two weeks in the NWSL. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending is presented by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. Learn more at bodyguards.com. West Coast Conference Awards came out yesterday. Uh, the coaches voted. The league has declared them for the season. So, Spencer, what did we learn about how the Cougars' seasons went based on those awards? I think it's very telling, Jerem, that this is the first time since BYU joined the West Coast Conference more than a decade ago that the Cougars on the men's side don't have at least two combined players on the first and second teams combined. Just Alex Barcelo. 
Then you look at, well, this is the first time BYU has not been a one, two, or three seed going into the men's postseason tournament. They are a number five, and it all kind of makes sense. In a way, it's kind of a microcosm of what this season has been for the BYU men in the WCC. So, yeah, I, I feel like it makes sense. Uh, and Alex is well deserving of that first team honor, but BYU is at their best, not surprisingly, when they have a big two or even a big three. Their best seasons have come with a big two or big three. Two years ago, it was Yoli Childs, Jake Toulson, and TJ Haas. Even last year, it was, you know, a, a bunch of different guys. It was uh, Alex Barcelo doing his thing again along with Matt Harms. Wouldn't it be nice to have Matt Harms this year? I mean, BYU just hasn't had a co-star for Alex Barcelo. So it makes perfect sense to me that this is where BYU is. And frankly, it says a lot about what's going to have to happen if BYU is indeed going to win their first game on Friday night and then have a shot at USF. And if they are to beat USF, the Cougars are going to have to have somebody co-star alongside Alex Barcelo, whether that's Fusini Traore or it's T. John Lucas or it's somebody off the grid, if it's Caleb Lohner. It just, it all makes sense, Jerem. Yeah, for the for the men, uh, it's clearly A B, obviously, right? And yeah, a- any team that just has one star is not going to be that good. Look at the Lakers right now, right? They're looking around, going, A D is injured, Westbrook stinks. Uh, we're the eight seed or seven or whatever. Yeah, for BYU, yeah, it makes total sense. Like the coaches look at A B and go, "Yep, that's a star." BYU always has one, but BYU traditionally always has two. You pointed out, if not three. So it makes sense that BYU is a five. In fact, BYU probably could have been a five without a single star. But here we are. So, yes, someone's, someone's got to show up here, uh, you know, coming up in this tournament, which we'll talk about in a second. But it, it, before the season, I think we thought it was going to be Caleb Lohner, that he was going to be perhaps that other dude. We didn't exactly know with Richard Harvin and Gavin Baxter. Gavin Baxter was playing like probably a second teamer in non-conference. I think he might have ended up there. I'm a little surprised in the end, you know, given when BYU before pre Santa Clara, T. John Lucas was probably a second teamer and then kind of faded to where he wasn't even really mentioned. So that was disappointing. Uh, but hopefully next year, a guy like Caleb Lohner can be that guy. Because if you look at next year right now, Spence, who's the first teamer on BYU's team next year? Is it Caleb Lohner? It's probably Foose. It's probably Foose, and then you're hoping for somebody else. Yeah, and you're and you're hoping that it's Fusini Traore because he's not even a second teamer this year. I mean, he's all freshman team. We kind of thought that Caleb Lohner, as you mentioned, would be that guy to make the jump from all freshman team to all conference performer. That didn't happen. So BYU fans are hoping it's Fus, or is it a guy that Mark Pope finds in the transfer portal, which you know he will be looking at very, very carefully and combing through heavily in the off season because when you lose Alex Barcelo, who's that guy to step up? That's a great question. Also of note, let's continue the conversation, Jerem, with topic two. Las Vegas is full of dynamic duos. Donnie and Marie, Penn and Teller, the guys with the Tigers. <laughs> okay? But on that note, Jerem, if Alex Barcelo is Donnie, who is going to be his metaphorical sidekick or Marie to help BYU get past San Francisco and get to a semifinal on Monday against Gonzaga? Marie might argue that it's Marie and Donnie, but that's a conversation for another day. I'm really hoping that Tijan Lucas is big in this tournament. He's played 141 career games. Like, the dude's played in the Big Ten. He's played, uh, you know, well with Milwaukee. Now he's at BYU looking for a chance to play a significant role in the NCAA tournament. Tijan Lucas has got to be a guy. Um, I'm hoping he's the number two. When BYU was really rocking and rolling, Tijon was the number one distributor. Tijon was scoring double figures consistently. Um, and, you know, he's at 11 a game, but, but in, non, in conference play, it's just been a little lower. I'm hoping that Tijon's the guy. There are other names that need to show up as well, and it was fun to see Caleb Lohner against LMU. Listen, uh, LMU had no bench, and, uh, you know, Pepe, uh, you know, wasn't, the, wasn't there. Uh, and it, he wasn't matched up with Eli Scott. <laughs> he took advantage of it, right? Which is awesome. But I don't know if I can expect that from Caleb every game. He's a good player. I want to see it. Uh, Foos, how much can we ask from him at this point? Can we ask him to be the number two? Like, when I look around, I see a lot more experience. I kind of want those guys to lead the way in Vegas. Plus, Foos has thrived when he's not going up against some of the, 
the bigger uh, names in the league. Like when it's against San Francisco and St. Mary's and Gonzaga, obviously it's a different challenge. So we can ask Foos Friday to be awesome, but on Saturday should be all you get there against San Francisco. Masalski is a different challenge. It's it, I can't ask Foos to, to win that battle per se. Absolutely. Three-point shooting is going to be a huge factor if – and when BYU gets to that matchup with San Francisco, you're right. I agree 100%. It has to be T. John Lucas, not just because he can score the basketball. He's been an alpha before, and he creates so many opportunities for his teammates. It has to be T. John Lucas, and he is fully capable of doing this. That's why Mark Pope, every time he's asked about T. John, he always talks about T playing on attack. When he plays on attack, it's just a different team. It's a different dynamic because he can do so many different things. He is a ball distributor and a ball scorer. So it, it needs to be him. He's the other senior alpha alongside Alex Barcelo. They told us about this beautiful movie they were going to make. Well, we have it set up down here in Las Vegas, Showtime City, for this to go down. The story has been laid out. The adversity has been put in front of them. How will this movie end with Alex Barcelo and T. John Lucas? They need to be the guys together that are co-starring in Vegas. They can make it happen. They're the ones that are going to create open, good three-point opportunities for Gideon George and Trevin Nell and Spencer Johnson and maybe even Caleb Lohner if he decides to take some threes down here. It's got to be T. John because of everything that he brings to the table potentially for BYU. Foos can only do so much. That inside presence can only do so much, uh, especially against Masalski, first teamer in the LWCC, and uh, the rest of the Don. So I, I agree with you 100%. It's got to be the dynamic duo of that senior alpha backcourt. T. John Lucas is the guy, and he is fully capable of stepping up into that role. And what if... Alex just says, you know what, maybe I do have to score 25 and not, you know, 19 in this. Maybe Alex has to do a little more, too. I don't know. Uh, BYU feels like their best basketball's uh, ahead of them. Well, that's Friday, and you don't know what happens after that. Because if you lose Friday, you're in the NIT. If you win Saturday, you still might be in the NIT, but hopefully you're in March Madness. Okay, let's get to the resume update. Net drops one to 53. Ken Palm goes up three to 47. Jerry Palm has BYU as an 11th seed. Jerry Brackett says you guys called him. Gold Jerry. Uh, he did not have BYU in the first four. They're just in as an 11 seed. I wish that was the case. I don't I don't know. Team rankings. <laughs> Yay, up 0.2%. Uh, nothing, nothing from Lenardi right now updated, by the way. We're waiting on Joe Lenardi. Joe, where you at, man? Mark Starr, we need, we need it every day. Where are you? Uh, Bracken Matrix, 11.69 uh, seed, 54 of 130 brackets. So... Hopefully this happens. Yeah, and Jerem, really, I mean, BYU was two out in Lenardi's last bracket. Uh, I know that there's been a little bit more movement on the bubble, and, and I've been watching those rootables day to day. I'm just glad that BYU is still only two out going into last night because the bubble over the past few days had not been favorable to BYU. So uh, interested to see where BYU falls today. John Gassaway told us earlier this week, 40% chance to make the tournament. If they beat San Francisco, does that climb up towards 60 or 65%? Let's just get there. Let's get to that point and then see. Maybe Jerry Palm has BYU as a single-digit seed if they beat USF. Yeah, that, that'd be just dumb. Our question of the day. If Alex Barcelo is Donnie, <laughs> who's going to be his Marie in order to make, uh, you know, help BYU to make it to Monday? Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Weigh in on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Dallin Worthington, no relation to Luke, but on Twitter. Tijon Lucas, when Tijon is driving hard, getting to the rim, knocking down shots, it opens up the whole offense. Hey, we agree there, Dallin. Uh, next response, Caleb Hatch on Instagram. Fusini is Marie. Foose has been tearing it up recently, and having that reliability down low will be helpful and help the Cougars advance to Monday night. And that's my question. How much can you ask Foose to do? Can you ask Foose to, to show? I'm not talking about Friday. I'm talking Saturday, like where he's 6'7", and he's matched up with like a 6'10", dude, it's, it, who's good. Yeah. That's a tough ask, right? Um, it's different when it's the, the bottom you know, five teams in the league. That's different. Yes, Foose can have a 25-19. Um, you know, against Pepperdine or whatnot. Can I just but, make a but point, Jerem? John Zedek was out of that game. Yes. I just thought of this. 
T. John's mom's name is Miss Marie. Does that not make perfect sense? There you sense? go. It's, it's perfect. It's Miss Marie is going to ch channel her Marie strength to T. John Lucas so that Alex can be Donnie and T. John can be Marie. Let's go. It's going to happen. It's perfect. It's perfect. Let's go, man. All right, Jerem, coming up. What I'm willing to put on the line if the BYU men's basketball team wins the West Coast Conference Tournament. Oh, not just gets to Monday? We're going there now? Okay. And back-to-back uh, -back West Coast Conference player of the year, Shaylee Gonzalez, will join us in the studio. The pros and cons of waiting until Monday to play. This is BYU Sports Nation from Provo and Vegas. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Do not know the groom's name. I missed it on our first date, and it's way too late to ask. Whenever you experience something funny, the first thing you want to do is, like, share it with your loved ones. Seeing that comedy, like, helped us through things, that like, we want to use that to help other people in a way. We had one kid whose make-a-wish was to come to Studio C. It made me be, like, these goofy sketches uh, mean a lot to people. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU TV's coverage of the West Coast Conference basketball tournament begins today at 3 Eastern time. That's why Spencer's in a tie, breaking our rules of no ties on the show. Watch as we broadcast 12 games plus BYU Sports Nation live from the Orleans, of course, like today and tomorrow and Monday and Tuesday and hopefully Wednesday. That means BYU uh, men's basketball and women's basketball won a championship, which we expect at least for women. Uh, speaking of more coverage from the West Coast Conference uh, Tournament in Las Vegas, Spencer's there. He'll rejoin us in a moment, but I am joined in studio by uh, the West Coast Conference Player of the Year. Back to back, Shaylee Gonzalez is on BYU Sports Nation. Shaylee, how you doing? Doing good. Thanks for having me. Congratulations on winning again. Thank you. I appreciate you, it. It wasn't co this time. It was just straight up you. Straight me, yep. <laughs> What's it like to win Player of the Year back to back times? I mean, I just feel super grateful and super blessed. And, you know, it goes to show, like, how much hard work I've put in. And I wouldn't be here without my teammates, too. They pushed me as well, like, on the court. And um, when I found out, I was super excited. And, um, you know, I couldn't believe that I got it another year. But also, too, I was like, dang, I wish Pace could have got it, too. I wish there was a co, too, because I there know was a, she That was a fun conversation too. we were having of, yeah. yeah, there could be co, who knows? Yeah, so I, because she, I know she works so hard, too, and yes. she deserves it as well, and she's a senior, and so I was like, I would have been, you know, just as much as grateful as she got it, too, and to be co would have been awesome, too. Now, we were told that there's this unique voting rules where each school says, this is our candidate, mm -hmm. right? So you couldn't even submit two names. Right. I wish the coaches could just say, here's who we think it is. Mm -hmm. But I think what they're doing is, well, if you two each got three votes and one, another player from another school got four, that they would win. But it's like, well, shoot. Yeah. How, that'd be – that'd mess with that. So uh, yeah. it's weird and complicated and whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and so how did you find out? 
Um, so I just found out from my coach. He just told the team yesterday. In front of the team? Yeah. After all practice? All the awards that everyone got. Yep. That's cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Did everyone get what you wanted there? Um, we felt like Tegan should oh, have been yeah. a little no, more. No, yeah. We for sure thought that, well, at least like our like si- our six girls who play a lot, they should have gotten at least something. Something. Yeah. Yes. Tegan should have got first team. and But, I mean, it is what it is. And yeah. we just got to go in the tournament and just kill it. Listen, you guys are used to this year, especially in the polls and the seating, just being mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Like, all right, fine. We'll just prove it on the court. Yeah, it is what it is. I feel like we definitely want to go out in the NCAA tournament and to make a point, prove a point. And, you know, we'd like a little bit more respect on our name. And so we're going to go out and prove to everyone what we really deserve. And hopefully the next year that we'll be able to have a little bit more higher ranking. <laughs> Do you think uh, maybe that, I guess, why do you think that is? Is it the perceived schedule from voters, which it isn't bad. I would Mm -hmm. argue it's good. Obviously, they're catering to Power 5 teams, and you won't have to worry about that in two seasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do think it's because of the Power 5 teams. And, um, I mean, we have BYU women's basketball. Like, we've just worked our way up and um, winning conference and beating, like, teams in the NCAA tournament, like, upsets and – just try, trying to make a statement, and I think that's super important for us as we build up BYU women's basketball. You have a chance to go 27-2 and two if you win the semifinal in the championship mm-hmm. game. And then it's like, okay, how can you not be a four seed at that point? Yeah. Right now you're projected as a five. Granted, in women's hoops, there's only one bracketologist, Charlie uh-huh. Cream. Appreciate what he does. Wish there were more, so we had yeah. more sample size here. Right. But uh, do you guys expect to be a top four seed should you win the WCC? Oh, yeah, I think we should. We definitely deserve it, and, um, you know, it would be so awesome to be able to host here and get that arena just filled with people. And, you know, that last game, the senior night, was amazing, Mm. having over 6,000 fans there, and um, that was the most we've ever had in program history. And so um, just having that many people come watch us and support us just means so much to us. Like, we just look up in the the stands and we're like, wow, like this many people are coming to watch us play. Um, And, you know, that game was – the most exciting, fun game I've ever played in. And, you know, to be able to host an NCAA tournament game would be awesome, and to get more fans to come out to that would be great. It was the culmination of so many amazing things. Mm-hmm. Obviously, senior night, the season you guys have been having. Yeah. Uh, you know, Gonzaga. Oh, yeah. Black oh, Unis, yeah. my yep. personal mm-hmm. favorite. My favorite, too. Okay, yep. yeah. That was that was an amazing experience. Yeah. Okay, you had a busy weekend. Yes. T- tell us about it. Yeah, so I went back home for a couple of days, um, to go watch my brother play in his state game. Uh, he's a junior, um, and they were the number six seed, and they played the number one seed, and they upset them, and they won nice. by six, I think. Six seed, six point win. Yeah, yep. So they played great, and they won that trophy. So okay, what do you, did you win a state championship in high school? Did any of your other siblings like? Where does this title ring yeah. in the family? Um, so I won state my junior year, and that was actually when Lauren Gustin was there in Arizona. She her family had moved down for a year at another school. Um, at so she lived in Utah and then moved down to Arizona for a year. So our she junior year, we you? won. No, we won it oh. together. Oh, together. Yeah, we. Won I didn't it together. realize you were on the same high school team. Yeah, yeah. So we won state wow. together my junior year. Um, now you're and connected then, to the hip, into the Big 12. Yep, yep, That's uh-huh, pretty cool. Yep. And then senior year, um, she moved back to Utah. Um, we did. We were the number one seed in state, but we ended up losing. It was the worst game ever. So I'd had, rather not talk about it. If you'd had Lauren, you would have won. Oh the game. yeah. 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 We were Lauren just did, we were just Lauren missing a big. Notice. So. Thank <laughs> Lauren. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to bring that up. Let's talk about more exciting things. Um, okay. Over the weekend, BYU played Grand Canyon. Uh, in in volleyball, and I said, "Hey, can I get some pictures of your parents who yeah. played at GCU?" Yep. Little connection there, uh, Josh and Candice. Uh, were they ever as good as you are now? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I definitely feel like basketball is a lot different now, and I grew up, you know, playing a little bit more competitive um, in club, and um, I definitely would <laughs> beat them one on one if I could right now. <laughs> I love them to death, but. I think just them being my coaches, like growing up, has made me definitely like the player I am today. Um, I'm super grateful for them. And um, but yeah, so they both played at Grand Canyon University, and that's where they met. So, did you ever think about going to G- GCU? Was that that like when I grew part? up? That's where I wanted to go. Actually, yeah. And growing then when up, did, when did BYU come in the conversation? Um, when I was 15, I went to their elite camp, and uh, that was the first time I went to a BYU camp, and that's when 
it all happen. I'm asking you questions I know the answer to because <laughs> Deep Blue Podcast. Go check it out. I had Shaylee on. It was really awesome. Like an hour. It was great. Yeah. Um, let's, let's talk about uh, the journey to this point, this team, this year for you. Mm-hmm. Take me back to when you tear your ACL after your freshman year mm-hmm. and the road you've been on and how hard it was to get to this point right now where you're perhaps leading the best team in BYU history. Yeah. Um, I mean, it wasn't easy. It might look like that, but, you know, there's – there's highs, there's lows. Um, you go through things and, you know, you just got to overcome those things and stay strong mentally and physically. And, um, after my, um, after sitting out that ACL year, um, I just really wanted to prove a point and to, you know, come back even stronger and to even fight more. And, um, I think I've done a great job in that. And, um, you know, we, we made it to the WCC tournament last year, but we unfortunately lost by 0.6 seconds, which was, the worst game ever. Yeah. Um, but then we went to the NCAA tournament, upset, um, and then we lost our next game. But I mean, we're just we just keep climbing every single year, and that's my goal is to just keep getting better and better every single year. And I know that this team is super special this year, and that we can make it far in the NCAA tournament. So I'm super excited. Uh, 0.6 seconds in quotations. Um, <laughs> it the, wasn't even. She didn't even get it off in 0.6 seconds. That's what I think. But the trigger was slow yeah. there. Um, cool. let, let's talk about the NCAA tournament. You mentioned you, you want to go further. Does that mean hey, we're going for the Sweet 16 plus? Because mm-hmm. you know you're in. That's yeah. the, right now. That's probably a nice feeling. Mm-hmm. But obviously, you want to maximize the seed because the key to winning in the NCAA tournament feels like historically matchups. And, hey, the higher the seed, Mm -hmm. the worse the team you're going to play. Granted, everyone's good at that level. Right. Yeah, I mean, ever since the beginning of the season, we've been chanting or cheering Final Four. Um, And so that's our goal. We want to make it to the Final Four, and we know we can. We can definitely upset a bunch of teams. And um, we're so stacked and we're so deep in this team. And um, anyone can have their night. Anyone can step up and play and have their – anyone can go off, really. And so – uh, we're just really looking forward to it. I love it. I love it. Okay, uh, we did the top five Tuesday. We did the top five plays of the women's basketball <laughs> season. Maybe you saw it. Uh-huh. I think you had three of the five. Uh, w- what are some of your favorite plays from this season? Because it's been an unbelievable year for <laughs> Thank you. Great plays, too. I Yeah, a lot of those plays were definitely definitely my favorites. Probably the very first one, I think, was the behind the back <sighs> between the screen. So sick. That one was pretty 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 <laughs> sweet um i think that one got on yeah espn yep. top 10 and yep. so that was pretty awesome but yeah yeah and we've got that clip it's at the very end <laughs> we'll show it in a second but yeah and a uh, variety of unis by the way we got royal we got white oh a little hezzy there i like that yeah okay. the black the black uniforms are definitely my favorite though so good i'd wear that those every single game if we could so good okay um the behind the back was amazing the one hander from maria was it oh yeah maria makes the best passes to me we're, we're just like connected like that and yes. she just tosses it to me i just i don't even know how he caught that did you and i caught it with my left hand too yes. and i'm not left-handed i'm right-handed but you're good with your left hand still. Yeah. You never thought to put your right hand on it. You're just like, eh, all I was the like, way. I'm going to make this look even more fancier. So I did. <laughs> and let's be One-handed. honest, if you missed that, it's like, eh, whatever, <laughs> you know. But you made yeah. it, and it was it was incredible. Okay, here it is. Well, I was on the run, and so I was just like, I'm just going to throw it up and see what happens. <laughs> but Man. no, yeah. Okay, let's, let's go back to the behind oh, the back. Nice. We'll, we'll pull it up here. Oh, I I, super it. slow-mo. Oh my gosh! It just came perfectly right into my left hand, so I was like, "I'm just gonna throw it up." And you're excellent and at in. finishing in transition, and you throw it real high off the glass. I love. It. Okay, here's the behind the back. Yeah, this one. This is dirty. Viewer discretion uh, advised. For violent dribbling. Yeah. I mean, that was incredible. <laughs> um, how about your teammates? Favorite play from one of your teammates this year that sticks out? Um, probably the one we played when we played Gonzaga and Maria threw. Um, that dart passed right through yes. literally everyone, and it went straight in my hands, and I just threw it up and got an and one. Just the vision of this team, the the uh, communication, the sharing. like The yeah. excitement. Yeah, you're exactly yeah, right. everything. Okay, I teased it earlier, but let's talk about the pros and cons of waiting until Monday. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the pro is you just show up, you got one game to get to the title game. Right. The con, everyone else is kind of playing, getting used to the court. There, yeah. Is there is there anything, are you anxious at all to be like, ah, wish we could play earlier? Or are you like, no, 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 we're good. We'll show up Monday mm-hmm. and we'll be good. I mean, we have more time to practice here at uh, the Annex. Um, I mean, it, we do have 
we don't play on Sunday or practice on Sunday, so we have that disadvantage. Um, so we'll probably have a little shoot around maybe um, either Sunday or Monday, probably Monday morning. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there leave? are pros Saturday? and cons. Yeah, we leave Saturday. Yeah, we leave Saturday. So um, we'll just relax Sunday, get mentally prepared, and then play on Monday. Probably it, versus Portland, I'm guessing. Probably Portland. Yeah. Yeah. And with Andrews out, that's a different kind of Portland team, but they're mm -hmm. still really good. Yeah. I mean, right? they did Alex still Fel beat us without her. So. Right. She got hurt in that game, which is crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. I think she tore her ACL. I think so, too. Yeah. Well, uh, we're excited to cover the tournament. We're going to do a gajillion games, none of which include you guys until Monday. <laughs> uh, but And the men on Friday. Right. But uh, good luck with everything. Safe travel Saturday. And let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma. Awesome. Thank you so much. We'll see you Monday me. down there. Thanks. Okay, Shaley Gonzalez, WCC Player of the Year. You're going to win it three times in a row? If you win it next year, that would be pretty good. Okay, coming up, West Coast Conference Commissioner Gloria Navarez from Vegas. And what's the weirdest question that we think Tyler Algier might get asked at the NFL Combine? We'll project. This is BYU Sports Nation. On the basic level, we offer transportation. We carry four wheels, tailgates, and a place to rest your rump. Beyond that, we provide adventures, opportunities, and jobs well done. So perhaps our favorite offering is our full line of trucks, including the new Nissan Titan. Right off I-15, Tim Daly Nissan Southtown and the popular full-size Nissan Titan. Think Nissan. Think Tim Daly. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. I watch uh, BYU TV because it has good programming uh, for all family members, aligns to my values. BYU TV really does help me with my parenting. It helps me show my kids good examples of the way that we should live. No matter what you watch or listen, you always live uh, feeling better. All of us together. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. It's a BYU baseball doubleheader today. Watch as the Batcats open the home schedule against Milwaukee. Beginning at 3 p.m. Eastern, watch on the BYU TV app or listen locally on 107.9 or BYUcougars.com. Yep, can't wait for the home opener. It's going to be great. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, uh, live in Studio B and Studio Orleans in Las Vegas as we get ready for the West Coast Conference Basketball Championship, most of which is on BYU TV. The women play on Monday, the men on Friday night, of course, tomorrow night. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it. Google Whip Round is presented by Maris, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. All right, Jeremy, let's begin with this. Should BYU fans be rooting for LMU or the Pacific men tonight in one of those early games? Should we want BYU to play a team it's already lost to or a team that it hasn't lost to? Uh, LMU is the team that I would like uh, to win. They've been banged up. Who knows how healthy they'll get for this game, but Pacific beat BYU. Um, both those teams challenged BYU on the road. LMU got BYU to OT. That would have been a devastating loss. Didn't happen. LMU is the clear answer. Yeah, LMU is a better matchup for BYU. However, the competitor inside of me says, ah, I want to erase any doubt in my mind and remind people that that Pacific game was an aberration. So the competitor says, bring on Pacific so that BYU can in a way right the ship. 
It shall not be blotted out. That quad four will just sit there still. Uh, what will the weirdest question Tyler Algier uh, be asked today during his combine interview? I'm hoping he gets the question that Daniel Sorensen got, which is like, all right, this paperclip. How many different uses can you find in, within a paperclip in 30 seconds? I don't know. There's going to be somebody that's like, hey, uh, what could you have done better in the Superman punch play? And it's like, uh, nothing. nothing. It was the yeah. perfect play in college football. There's nothing that I could have done better. So uh, one of those two I think would be kind of fun. I I was love the if you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be? It's just like the stupidest question of all time. <laughs> just to get to know people. Go by so the way, weird. go Google like weird NFL comment questions. I can't even bring them up on the air, some of them, where it's like, what? <laughs> like weird stuff, man. Which by the way, uh Trevor Sakema uh just posted the following. We just showed a graphic of it. Tyler Algier said he'll be doing all workouts other than bench to show teams he'll do whatever they need him to do. He was asked if he'd ever play linebacker again like he did at BYU. He smiled and said, hey, I'll do whatever they ask me to do. As, as teams get to know Tyler Algier, they will love him. Go, I promise you they're going to be watching his deep blue. They're going to understand where he comes from, what he's about, and he's going to be a steal for whoever takes him whenever they take him. Yes, he's going to run a 4 4 as well. I can't see anything happening other than him raising his draft stock just because he's still somewhat off the radar. People are going to notice him. Yeah. I don't know why he's off the radar, though. That's, yeah. All right. Yeah. Jeez. Okay, back to basketball. Uh, or is it baseball? It's a basketball guy within baseball. Who is T. John Lucas rooting for today when BYU baseball takes on his former school, Milwaukee? Uh, the only thing that would be better if, if it was a doubleheader against Milwaukee and Illinois is two former schools, but I think he's going for Brigham. That's the that's the current boo. He's bought in on BYU. I'm with you. He's all BYU at this point. If it were, if it were like basketball or something, then it'd be a little weird for him. Um, but, yeah, no, this is baseball. He's all in on BYU. Of course he is. Panthers and Cougs coming up at 3 Eastern time on the BYU TV app and BYU Radio. BYU Sports Nation tweeted out a look back seven years ago when I shaved my head when I said, BYU wins at Gonzaga, I'll shave my head. Well, that was the first of three in a row. Little did we know. Uh, so, Robbie McCombs replied to this tweet with the question, if BYU wins the WCC tournament, will you shave your head, Spencer? What's your take? Uh, to which I said, if that's what it takes, why not? I mean, BYU hasn't won a postseason conference tournament in men's basketball in 21 years. That is a wild step, not in the Jimmer years. Uh, we thought maybe they were going to do it a couple of years back with uh, TJ and Jake and Yo. That didn't happen. Lost to St. Mary's. It almost happened you know, last this year. Is crazy. 21 years. Yes. Listen, if it takes that, if it takes me shaving my head for BYU to win the postseason tournament, why not? Let's do it. Let's make history. Here's a truth bomb. BYU might not win a conference title in men's basketball in the tournament for another 20. <laughs> Gonzaga, Big 12? I'm just hoping BYU wins a game in the Big 12 tournament. Like, this is not a thing I that know. is going to be regular or happen at all for a while. So, <laughs> All right, Jerem, coming up, rise and shout out to a very, very busy next five days. Absolutely. Let's go. And Spencer talks to West Coast Conference Commissioner Gloria Navarez. Is it in the league's best interest to get BYU into the semifinals? This is BYU Sports Nation. Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life. When you live at TRIO, less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TRIOORUM.com. Welcome to a partnership where customer experience comes first. It's our focus. It's your expectation. We provide support to those that go the extra mile for all of us. Supplying products, training, and service for generations. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com.
they prefer to be bringing the heat. Getting set for success. Demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. The Larrabees were noted for the parties they gave. There was David. He was handsome and charming. Don't embarrass me. It's good for you. What if he forgets all about me? You don't recognize me, do you? There was Linus. Hello, Sabrina. You convinced me that there were some things missing in my life. I want you to come to Paris with me. Will you come? Don't say no. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Enter for your chance to win one of five BYU basketball prize packs that include autographs from the women's and men's basketball teams, socks, a mini hoop, and more by following BYU TV Sports on Instagram. Like that post and tag your friends for more entries. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Of course, we're live in Provo. And with me here in Las Vegas at the Orleans Arena, Jeremy will rejoin us in a moment. But right now, it is our great opportunity rather, to welcome in the West Coast Conference Commissioner, Gloria Navarez, with us. Gloria, it's great to have you back on the show and in Las Vegas. Spencer, it's so great to be here with you in person. Yeah, my goodness, yes. And we're going to have fans back. I know. How have preparations been different for you as you've prepared to welcome fans back into the Orleans Arena? You know, it's been much closer to normal than we have been in the last two years, and I feel like an excited puppy just being back <laughs> in the gym. <laughs> I think that's, uh, we all kind of feel that way for sure. Are there going to be any limitations for the fans? Like, is it a max crowd? Like, what, what are the dynamics of that? No, Vegas, uh, the state of Nevada lifted their mask mandate. Of course, if you, you know, want to wear masks to your comfort level, absolutely, but we don't have any uh, restrictions in uh. capacity. I, I feel like we are inching closer and closer to normal, which is just fantastic. Yes. What's the best part about this week for you personally? It, again, it's the excitement. Not only just COVID, but I, our league has invested so much mm. in basketball, both men's and women's, and you can see the progress year over year. But for COVID, you know, 20, we would have had three teams in the men's side, single seed last year's Portland women upsetting. It's just been such great hoops. So I'm glad the fans, family, friends, fans are going to be back with us to experience it all. Uh, for those fans that are making the drive to Vegas from all of the different WCC institutions, what kind of an event or maybe what uh, different things can they expect uh, at the Orleans Arena this year? Well, fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for one. Uh, there's that. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've really invested a lot in our game operations and, you know, the show that is the production, the halftime acts, the, you know, calling the game and the, the music and the pomp and circumstance, our, all of our branding signage. You know, the floor is pretty new. It's about three years old. And so we just really have tried to elevate the experience to compare with any other major Division One conference out there. Fantastic. West Coast Conference Commissioner Gloria Navarez is with us on BYU Sports Nation. I have people ask me every year, hey, how come BYU TV does all of these games and not just the BYU games? I know how I have answered it and will continue to answer it. But from your stance, why has the West Coast Conference continually chosen BYU TV as the primary broadcast partner for this specific event? Well, first, our ESPN does have our first rights, so they do take the, you know, a couple games at the end of the event. But BYU TV is unparalleled as far as a campus-run network, as far as their quality of production. I mean, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but ESPN will take the BYU feed any day of the week. Yes. It's so high quality. They called us a mini ESPN last week. Yes. Which we appreciated. <laughs> we appreciate because, you know, you're in the family and, you know, don't really charge us market rates on occasion, so we love that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's all about what works for business, right? And it's yeah. mutually beneficial. Exactly. Okay, speaking of BYU, the men's team is in a very interesting situation. Uh, we were just talking about uh, what they need to do to really kind of bolster their resume, obviously winning on Friday night and then getting an opportunity for a late quad one win against San Francisco. That would help BYU a lot, but is it in – the conference's best interest for BYU to win that game because that maybe would give the WCC the best chance to have four teams in the tournament? So what you said just now, 
neutral court quad one game for both San Francisco and BYU. Yes. The way we're looking at it, it's an acceleration game. Okay. There are no losers when you play that game because it's a quad one neutral court game. And that's what we've worked so hard to achieve. By raising the level of the league top to bottom, these types of games helps boost resumes whether you win or lose. Yeah, and I'm looking at a team like, uh, and you and I were talking during the break, and I, and I went hard after North Carolina yesterday on BYU Sports Nation, but I know North Carolina obviously has long-standing branding. They have championship caliber history, but they're not the North Carolina that we have seen in the past. In fact, the ACC is somewhat down this year, but yet they are, according to a lot of brackets, firmly in. And I'm seeing, okay, they have one quadrant one victory, BYU has four. If you combine Q1s and Q2s, North Carolina has five victories. BYU has seven. So why is it that BYU is, you know, more commonly out compared to North Carolina? And that's, thank you for bringing that up, because that's what fans, you know, and articles like to talk about. But every year is a new start. I don't care who you are, I don't care what your brand is, how many times you've been to the tournament. Your resume starts at the beginning of the season and ends at the end of this season. And yeah. BYU went out, you look at their resume, the way they scheduled, they, they came through non-conference, they had a couple injuries, they've found their legs since, but that's what the committee is tasked with doing, looking at the snapshot that is this year, but also where are they today when they end the season, better, healthy, stronger, rebounding from some of the lost players. So I, I think they have just as good as case of anyone else fighting for that at large. Is it fair to say that that is the message that you are delivering to the selection committee? If Every not, what, what else are you talking to them about? Yes, yes. And our selection committee reps have been fantastic. We talk to them daily. We text them on any developments. But, you know, we have three locks right now, in my opinion. And I think BYU, no matter what happens here, is worthy of a at large. Gloria Navarez, the commissioner, has spoken. So let it be written. She feels that the Cougars belong in the bracket. We're, we're with you. On the women's side, the BYU women, we kind of feel like, are not getting the respect that they deserve. We feel like, okay, looking at the resume and all of the teams they have beaten head-to-head -head that are currently slated to be in the tournament, they deserve to be at least a four seed. And again, we obviously are biased because we watch that team closely. You do too in the West Coast Conference. What does BYU have to do to better their resume on the women's side and say, hey, we deserve to be a top four seed? You mean here at the tournament or yeah, generally? Just, just in general. I mean, yeah. No, I, I, I agree with you. I think they've done the work. They've scheduled correctly and won the games they needed to win. I, I have a lot of confidence in our reps on, on the women's committee too. They've been following us closely and we've been providing them information minute by minute. So I think we're well positioned there. Okay, uh, what are those conversations like emotionally for, uh, for the West Coast Conference with the committee? You know, it's really funny because we strategize you know, we want to be biased, we want to cheer, we want to sell, but you have to maintain credibility. So you don't want to be a used car salesman, but you do the research, you get the data, just like you were talking about. You're looking at the team sheets, the quad one and two wins, and making the case. I think it's really important to talk about what's happening to the teams behind the scenes. Who had to sit for COVID or who was out certain games, how you know certain players are responding to injuries. So it's really a balance of art and science when we make the pitch to the committee. What has been the best part about having a brand like Gonzaga be so consistent on the men's side and essentially be the top seed overall for the majority of this season? I think all boats rise with the tide because every time Gonzaga starts a season, national basketball media eyes are looking at the WCC and we have a chance to sell our message through every single game they are on every time. Our logo, our family brand is on that uniform. It talks about how great the WCC is. And when they come through conference play and they don't always, you know, um, win by double digits, that's a strong statement. Sure. Do you feel like the West Coast Conference is finally getting the respect that you have pined for for so long? <laughs> yes. I think we're turning that corner. Man, COVID set us back for sure. That year, those couple years would have really been great stories to tell. But um, I think the people who know basketball, the folks that cover us, the national media, understand mm -hmm. our investment and how it's paying off. Gloria, you've been fantastic to work with. We appreciate the relationship that BOA TV has with the West Coast Conference. You're always so kind to us. We know how busy you are. Uh, before you go, I do need to ask, what's your go-to snack when you're watching all these basketball games? Cheez-Its. Cheez-Its are your thing. <laughs> yes. Get the ladies some Cheez-Its. Get her some cheese and crackers. Let's go.
I think we can work that out for you. Maybe we can get a sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Gloria, thanks for hanging out with us on BYU Thank Sports you, Nation. All right, coming up, your elite voice and a busy rise and shout out up next on BYU Sports Nation. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. family if you're looking for something new to watch stop scrolling and start streaming BYU TV has a ton of great options to binge together from bold adventure to family drama and even a little fun there's something for everyone binge entire series experience all the feels immerse in non-stop entry and treat yourself to unexpected turns think you know BYU TV we're just getting started Andy is new this season. Yeah, she's awesome. Very capable and very big hearted. It's so amazing to be a part of this. I mean, to travel around the world and learn so much from others while we can participate in their goals in meaningful ways. Yeah, we like to tease her. You know, it's natural, though, being the new girl and all. Yeah, she hit the ground running. Yeah, she did. I hope the show can inspire others to get involved and open their eyes to the people around them. Yeah, she looks small, but she's super tough. Doesn't like snakes, though. Yeah, that's for sure. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is always available on demand via the free BYU TV and BYU Radio. Or download the podcast. Just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show. Uh, at uh, right, Tricky Jim. Tanner uh, tweeted, uh, why does Jerem Jordan always have a I hate everything about life look? And he had a still image <laughs> of me just like. And uh, to which I, I replied, uh, that's my BYU's on the bubble face, or I just ate Taco Bell 20 minutes ago. <laughs> so it just depends yeah. what you want for whatever you use. So, yeah. Hey, at least there was some real enjoyment eating the Taco Bell, right? Yeah, at some point there was that. Yeah, we, we are about to embark on yeah, what, yeah, yeah. what traditionally is uh, for our crew and us the most intense, like, four days of work we have all year. And it's very fun as we get going at 3 Eastern coming up today. The women's 8-9 between Pepperdine and LMU, Santa Clara in the 7-10 after that. There will be a break between games. Uh, but we got get, Spence. You calling the first two games, right? Calling the first two games, ready to nice. roll, baby. Dave and Blaine will call the next two uh, coming up tonight. LMU Pacific, San Diego Pepperdine. Okay, these are the first round games. Tyler Haas and I are in studio doing halftime shows, and then the tournament update between games in a session. We do this two days, and then Saturday we do uh, for the women, and then uh, Monday for the women again. So what what we got this year and what we talked about, Spence, uh, I jokingly said last week was, hey, we got a BYU TV men's game. Yeah, that's great. I wish they weren't on BYU TV, meaning they got at least a top four seed, but uh, we're going to get five seed BYU men Friday night against the winner of LMU and Pacific, and then uh, Monday the women come in. So it's going to be a fun tournament. There are a lot of great storylines here. For sure. And the BYU TV game for the men, look, we said it earlier in the show this week, it's just laying the groundwork for the BYU Sports Nation karma to be more directly involved with giving the BYU men what they need so that they can get to a Monday semifinal. That's all this is, yeah. Jerem. It's just karma <laughs> distributor. That's all we are. That's why we can never go away. Okay, our question of the day. If Alex Barcelo is Donnie, <laughs> who's going to be his Marie in order for BYU to make it to Monday? Right now, Zoe is like, what the heck? I'm right here. Uh, CL underscore living on Twitter. 
Alex can be the lead player on the cello, 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 but the whole orchestra needs to come together for this uh, Titanic Vegas production. The Titanic went down. Do we really want to make a reference to that? Uh, Derek R. Gibson on Instagram. No, we don't. I don't. Th it was capitalized Titanic, so that's a proper noun, right? Derek R. Gibson on Instagram. <laughs> like Donnie today, Barcelo's the lone star with a good supporting cast. Um, <laughs> this show isn't making it to Monday. Please prove me wrong. Help thou mine unbelief. <laughs> yes, yes. Come on! Let's help this man. Yeah, look, if you missed it earlier in the show, T. John's mom, who is fantastic we right. love her her name not a joke is miss marie that's a touch it's down. perfect it has to be t john lucas sean patrick o'reilly it's got to be on t -John. facebook i'll volunteer but i don't look good in a dress you know what i'd get a second opinion on that okay <laughs> let's 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 not rule it out at this point so we we talked about it before and we agreed yes t john lucas needs to be the guy i think friday you could say foos but then saturday it's like all right you got to crank it up, boys. Um, you know, Tijon, you got to you got to really be there. Like we need a we need a fourteen and six Tijon performance. You know, against San Francisco. And let's be honest, if BYU gets to Saturday and it's Bouye and Shabazz again, that's a really tough matchup. That BYU won on the hill in San Francisco, but got blown out at home. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens Friday and then hopefully Saturday and then hopefully Monday. He plays Gonzaga. I just want to play Gonzaga. I don't need to beat sure. Gonzaga. We just need to play Gonzaga. And now the yes, music begins in New Orleans. They just turned on the music. Yeah. The music is kicked in. The music is kicked in. <laughs> We're all feeling good. Let's get it going. Yeah, Jerem, I, I, I think the three-point shooting against San Francisco is going to be What? I can't hear you the over the music. <laughs> BYU's got to make threes. Trevin Nell, Spencer Johnson, Gideon George. If they can knock down some threes and take some pressure off of Alex Barcelo, it's going to be a massive, massive weight off of AB's shoulders. Listen, loud noises in that arena are better than what we experienced a couple years ago when we interrupted BYU's no noise free throw experience. <laughs> and we got the cold shoulder suddenly. <laughs> that was the other Those end of the spectrum. Guys. What are you doing? <laughs> We're like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, we we've been oh, we've been called man. worse names in Vegas before, so it's all good, man. Uh, today's rise and shout out brought to you by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. We talked about it, West Coast Conference Tournament. We got a great crew down in Vegas and here in Provo, about to get after it, man. We're gonna call a bunch of games, do a bunch of shows. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, we love these guys. They deserve more of a shout-out, you know, so why not give them a shout-out at the beginning of the tournament? And we'll do it again at the end because everybody on this crew works so incredibly hard. It is a massive, massive effort to make this happen. Our thanks to today's guests, Shaley Gonzalez and Gloria Navarez. Our apologies to Dennis Pitta. No time for you in Las Vegas, brother, perhaps next time. For Spencer, I'm Jerem. Shout-out to Judy Hunter. Baseball's on the app at 3 Eastern, and the West Coast Conference Tournament begins at the same time on BYU TV. Go Cougs!